All right, so uh, the last class, uh, we looked at taking the derivative really quickly, which uh, we used the, uh, the power rule. All right, so we use that uh, to solve. Now, a lot of times when we did questions, we had to change the way that question looked so that we could use the power rule. But now we're going to look at two different rules because not every function are you able to just apply the derivative or change the way it looks. And so we've got other rules and uh, two of them we're going to look at today. The first one's called the chain rule and the second one is called the product rule. Now the chain rule is this, is that if f of x is actually equal to some other function to the power of n, uh, then what we do is, it's kind of like a power rule, where we bring the exponent down, knock one off the exponent, we still have our function, but we have the addition in that we then multiply it by the derivative of the function inside the brackets there, or whatever function is being taken to the power of n. Alright, so for example, f of x is equal to 3x minus 1 to the power of 6. Now I could use our old rule, but it's going to take me some time because I would have to take 3x minus 1 and multiply it by itself six times. That's a lot of algebraic manipulation going on. Or I can use the chain rule. So uh, what I do is I'm going to find my derivative here at prime of x. And again, uh, there's my function inside the brackets. But I'm going to bring the 6 down, then multiply it by that 3x minus 1. Of course, subtract 1 from the exponent, just like we did with the power rule. And then we just have the exception here is where we take the derivative of the inside of the function. The derivative of 3x is just 3. And the derivative of minus 1, again, that's a constant function, so the derivative is 0. And so, in fact, uh, if I was to simplify this, we have, well, 3 times the 6, I could actually put those together to get a final answer of 18 in front. There we go. So there's our final derivative. Again, that's a much quicker than expanding that polynomial out, uh, 3x minus 1 to the power of 6, and then using the power rule. Uh, same idea here. y equals x cubed minus 5x squared uh, plus 3 to the power of 3. Again, I could use the power rule, but wow, that would be a annoying. Uh, multiplying this by itself three times and then finding the derivative. So again, I'm going to use the chain rule. So I have y prime, that's my derivative. Bring the 3 down in front. So I have 8x cubed uh, minus 5x squared plus 3, bracket, subtract 1 from the exponent, so I have a 2, and then multiply, this time we're going to have a little bit more here, the derivative of the function inside the bracket. So the derivative of 8x cubed is going to be 24x squared. All right, then 2 times negative 5, I'm going to have a minus 10x. Uh, and then again, 3, the derivative of 3 is 0. And there we go. There's our derivative. Again, you'll notice that inside the chain rule, we're also using the power rule. When I had to take the derivative of the inside of that function, both of them, uh, I had to use the power rule. So when we're taking the derivative, we are going to use rules inside rules. All right. Um, example three. Here's something a little bit different. We got f of x is equal to one divided by negative four x squared plus three x divided by four. Now this is a case. Again, this is something I've talked about with exponents. Is that we can put things in the numerator, um, just or switch from the denominator to the numerator if you have a power, just by changing the sign on the exponent. So first thing I'm going to do here is rewrite this function as negative 4x squared plus 3x. But because I just flipped this to the numerator, the exponent now is not going to be 4. It's going to be a minus 4. All right, so I just changed the way that looks so that I can use the chain rule. So my derivative now, f prime of x, bring the negative 4 down in front. All right, I have my function there of negative 4x squared plus 3x. Again, subtract one from the exponent. So if minus 4 and subtract another one, it's going to be minus 5 times now, again, the derivative of the function inside. Uh, so let's see here. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, and then I'll just have an x. 
And then the derivative of 3x, well, that's just going to be a 3. Again, 1 on the x, 1 times 3, and then the x is gone. And then, I, uh, again, I could further simplify this function or rewrite it. I don't know if I'm simplifying it really, just rewriting it. Where I have this negative 4 here times that negative 8x plus 3. But then I could flip that expression with the negative exponent. I could put it back in the denominator if I felt like it. And so that it would be negative 4x squared plus 3x. But again, because I flipped it to the denominator, the exponent would change back into a positive. So again, I didn't really change it. I just changed the way it looked. That's all. All right, so that is our chain rule. Now, the next one we get it is the product rule. And a product, again, is when you're taking two things and you're multiplying. All right, so here's our product rule. Again, you, you, with derivatives, you can use uh, uh, rules within rules. So uh, if we have two functions, f of x and g of x, and again, because we're using the product rule, they'd be multiplying each other. So if these two functions multiply each other, then the derivative is the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. All right, so in this case, here we go, y uh, equals x cubed times 2x minus 4. And so, uh, well, there's our first function, x cubed. And then our second function is the 2x minus 4. All right, so uh, let's see here. So I'm using, finding the derivative of y prime, the derivative of the first function. Well, the derivative of x cubed is just going to be 3x squared times the second function, which I don't do anything to, so it's 2x minus 4, plus the first function, which again is just x cubed times the derivative of the second function. Well, the derivative of the second function, uh, the derivative of 2x is just a 2. And the derivative of negative 4 is 0. And there we go. There's our function. It's done. Now, I could, uh, let's see, I got, oh, no, these are separated. So uh, I could rewrite this as 2x cubed, which I would. But again, I just don't have the room. But there we go. There's our derivative. Now, uh, our second function here. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I'll do stuff all over on this. I'll find out the derivatives over on the side. I don't have room, but I am going to do that for example 3. But again, h of x, I could do the same thing. h prime of x. It's going to be long, I think. Let's see here. I take the derivative of the first function. Again, uh, let's see here. Let's write them. Let's spot them out here. So there's my first function x plus 3 to the power of 5. Let's see, and then my second function, x minus 7 to the power of 6. All right, so let's see here. Derivative of the first function, I'm going to have to use uh, the chain rule. Uh, 5 down in front times x plus 3 to the power of 4. Uh, then take the derivative of inside. Well, the derivative of x, there's a 1 there, just the 1 comes down, so it would be times 1. I don't really have to do anything. Uh, and then again, the derivative of 3 is 0. So I could put a times 1 here, but I'll just leave it alone. Uh, then times my second function, which is that x minus 7 to the power of 6 plus. Now we get to the second part of it. Uh, and I don't want to get messed over here, but so plus. Then I take my first function, which is our x plus 3 to the power of 5 times the derivative of our second function, which again, I'll bring the 6 down, x minus 7, knock one off the exponent to 5, now times again the derivative of the inside, but again, the derivative of x is just 1, because the 1 comes down from the exponent, times the 1 in front, and then that uh, ends up with an x to the power of 0, and that would be it. There's our derivative. Now we get to example three. A little more involved here, a little bit more going on. And I only say that because when I take the derivative of the inside of these functions, I'm not going to get a one like I did here. 
So what I'm going to do is, this says g of x. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, function 1 right here, and this is function 2. All right, now, before I do the product rule, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to find the derivative of each piece just separately on its own. And this is a valuable thing because when you're finding the derivative, sometimes you can mess up and you just get lost in the details because there's exponents everywhere, x is everywhere, numbers everywhere. So it's really important to just uh, do the derivative separately when you're using the product rule and the quotient rule, which we will do our next class. All right, so uh, for the derivative of uh, the first one, well, why don't I name these things? I'm going to call this one uh, f of x. Whoops, f of x, and uh, let's call the second one, oh, I don't know. You know what, I'm going to call it g of x, and I'm just going to relabel this function h of x. Let's do that. That way I fit in with my formula. All right, so down the bottom here, I'm going to find f prime of x. All right, so I've got my 4 comes down. Then I've got my 3x minus 9 to the power of 3, and then times the derivative of the inside. Now, the derivative of 3x is 3, all right? And the derivative of negative 9 is 0. And so this derivative ends up being, let's see, 3 times 4, put a 12 out front. So I get a 12 times 3x minus 9 to the power of 3. All right, so I just found the derivative of the first part. Because again, when I do the product rule, I'm just going to be able to plug it in. And again, when we get into questions where you think you might have messed up, it's easier to go back and go, okay, check this derivative. Do I do it right? Then we can go over here and check, well, our g prime of x. All right, so I'm taking the derivative of the second part. So again, uh, that 5 is going to come down. I have an 8x squared plus 4. Uh, knock one off the exponent, and then times, uh-oh, uh, times uh, the de derivative of the inside, well, the 2 times 8 gives me 16, but I still have an x there, and then times, uh, well, the derivative of 4 is 0. All right. Well, I can simplify that. 5 times 16. Oh, I don't know what that is. Let me see. Uh, 5 times 16x. 5 tens is 55. It's going to be 80. 80x. And then we got this 8x squared plus 4 to the power of 4. There we go. All right, so now that I have found those derivatives, now I'm ready to use the product rule. All right, so uh, I just renamed this function h of x, so now I've got h prime of x. You can see I might have trouble fitting all this stuff in, but I'm going to do my best. All right, so it says product rule, derivative of the first function. Well, I found that out. It's right here. 12 times 3x minus 9 cubed, all right, times the original g of x. So that's this right over here, this 8x squared plus 4 to the power of 5. All right, now, plus the second part. I'll just write it down here because I don't have room. The first function, f of x, which is our 3x minus 9 to the power of 4 times the derivative of g of x, which I did separately down here, which is 80x, 8x squared plus 4 to the power of 4. And that is that derivative. Again, using the old product rule. But again, when you have some complicated looking functions multiplying each other, I would always suggest doing it separately. All right, now, one last thing. Let's see here. Uh, I'm going to need to clean this off a little bit. Just give me a second.
So we've now just looked at three rules over the last couple days uh, dealing with derivatives. So uh, I have a second example, or last example here is, make sure this is nice and dry, uh, find uh, f prime or y prime or y, e y prime for y equals, uh, let's see here, 2x minus 3 uh, squared. All right, now, what I want to show you here is that we can actually use, we can find the derivative of this function three different ways. We got this 2x minus 3. So the first thing I could do, look at the first one, is I could expand it out. Binomial squared, so I take 2x and I square it, I would get 4x squared. Uh, then 2 times negative 3 times 2x. Well, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Uh, times 2x is negative 12x. And then negative 3 squared is a positive 9. So again, that's what we used uh, before when we had the power rule. So I'm going to use the power rule now that I've expanded it. Nothing crazy. 2 times 4 is 8x. Subtract 1 off. The derivative of negative 12x is negative 12. So there's my derivative. Now the second way is I could use the chain rule that we just learned today, where we have a function that's taken to the power of something. And again, uh, I would go 2, bring the 2 down, times 2x minus 3, subtract 1 off the exponent, so there's just a 1 there now, which means it's just the normal function, and then times it by the derivative of inside, and the derivative of 2x is 2, uh, and the derivative of negative 3 is 0. And so our y prime, uh, let's see here, 2 times 2 is 4, it would be 4 times 2x minus 3. And again, if I expanded that out, well, 4 times 2x is 8x, and 4 times negative 3 is minus 12. Same answer. So if I use the, pro or the, the uh, power rule here, chain rule here, and then if finally, I can use the product rule. Because... 2x minus 3 squared, expand it out, is just 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3, where there's two functions multiplying each other. They happen to be the same, but we do have two functions multiplying each other. Well, to find the derivative, find the derivative of the first function. Well, the derivative of 2x is just a 2 times 2x minus 3 plus the first function, which again is our 2x minus 3, times the derivative of 2x minus 3, which again is just 2. All right, so I have 2x, 2 2x minus 3s over here, 2 2x minus 3s over here, so in total I have 4 of them. And so lo and behold, when I now expand out, we get 8x minus 12. Again, the same answer. So there is, when we have our rules for derivatives, there's multiple ways uh, to take, not always, but sometimes there are multiple ways to take the derivative of a function. One way might be easier than the other. In this case, for me, I think number two, using the chain rule would be easier, but some could argue that uh, the power rule might be better. I don't think the uh, the product rule in this case was the best situation, best scenario, but again, the point is, is that these rules, not only can they be intertwined with each other when we're taking derivatives, is that we can actually use the derivatives, uh, the rules, some can be applied uh, to all the functions, some cannot.